Welcome to this presentation on cardiac response to live music performance. On behalf of the study leads, Professors Pierre Lembiazzi, Peter Taggart, and myself, Elaine Chu, I will be telling you about the design of our study and analyses we have done. And you'll also hear me, Pierre Lembiazzi, commenting on the data and some of the analyses we've undertaken. Strong emotions are linked to lethal arrhythmias, but the mechanism by which emotions destabilize the heart's electrical activity and cause abnormal heart rhythms are not well understood. To study this, we invited patients from the pacemaker clinic to a live piano concert. We studied eight patients listening to five pieces of music over three study days in order to examine their cardiac response to the music. The patients listened to classical music by Bach and Chopin, contemporary music by Jonathan Berger, and two arrhythmia suites based on ECG recordings of ventricular tachycardia episodes. The patients. Biventricular pacemakers were first programmed from CRT to dual chamber pacing at 80 beats per minute or 10 above the intrinsic rate. Then, their left ventricular unipolar electrogram data is downloaded whilst they're listening to the music. The action potential duration, the APD, is measured using a well-validated surrogate, the activation recovery interval, the ARI, which is the time from the point of steepest descent of the QRS electrogram to the time of the steepest ascent of the T wave. The sequence of three ARIs shown here is part of a larger ARI time series extracted from the electrogram. In the full ARI time series, we know when the pacing begins and when the music starts. On this first study day of three, the concert lasted for about 15 minutes. On days two and three, there were 30 minutes of music. The green and red markers indicate the outliers. This patient was quite relaxed before the music began. The shorter ARIs after the concert are probably due to higher arousal. So to highlight here that we know from previous studies, the ARI shortening is associated with increased sympathetic tone or a stress response, and that a longer ARI is associated with increased vagal tone or more relaxed state. We specifically pace the heart at a fixed rate in order to focus on the ARI changes independent of heart rate. So why use music to understand cardiac response to emotions? Music induces strong emotions. We use live music to accentuate its effect. Strong emotions are due to violations and fulfillments of expectations, which happen at points of change and transition. Composers often mark structurally important points of change in the music score, such as this presto con fuoco in Chopin's Ballade No. 2. Listen to the changes that occur at the structural boundary. The changes include dynamics. The music went from soft to loud, tempo, it went from practically a standstill to fast, rhythm, a lilting 6-8 to furious 16th notes, key from F major to A minor, character from languid to fiery. We will examine the activation recovery interval changes across boundaries such as this, measuring and comparing the ARI before and after the structural boundary. Listen to the same example again. This time, we will simultaneously follow the ARI time series. Note what is happening in the music at the lowest ARI value. The lowest ARI is in the midst of the presto con fuoco. At this point, the dynamics peak, the tension peaks, the harmony is highly unstable, thus the unsurprising stress response. This example looks at silence and music. This excerpt is from the end of the Chopin Ballade as tempo one returns and the piece ends. <laughs>
The low ARI values before tempo one are during the pause. Another one in the next segment is during the rest. Peaks are also observed in the ratio between the low frequency and high frequency components of the ARI just before tempo one and in the silence after the piece ends. So silence can be stressful. Here we show an example of the ARI changes which occurred before and after nearby boundary changes in the music. These boundary changes represent transitions in the music marked by the composer. You can see here in patients one and two, there are statistically significant decreases and increases in the ARIs respectively at these boundary changes. This therefore represents that there are different responses to the music in the ARI at boundary points, and these seem to be quite individual to the patient. This represents quite a challenge when we try to undertake an analysis of the effect of the music changes on the ARI through the piece. These histograms illustrate changes in ARI which were statistically significant across different boundaries in the music. And overall, in the mean data, there's a significantly greater proportion of changes than one would expect by chance, with one particular patient having 11 shifts over that time frame. In order to analyse this work to take into account all the multiple components of the music and also the variability in the ARI responses for the group data of the patients, we undertook um, statistical modelling of the data. We have shown that ARI means change across music score boundaries. In ongoing work, we look for music features such as tempo, loudness and tension that can be linked to ARI changes. For each ARI change point, we look in its vicinity, say within some time radius age, for changes in specific music features that can be associated with that ARI change point. The two diagrams here show successful and unsuccessful tries at finding music feature changes near ARI change points. Based on a large number of simulations, we have the proportion of random ARIs that are associated with the music feature changes, the shaded area in the graph shows the 5 to 95 percentile of the success rate for the simulated data. The orange line shows the observed or empirical proportion of successes. The empirical ARIs outperform the random process for time thresholds between 1.5 and 4.1 seconds. We perform these tests not just for individual music features, but also combinations of music features. The orange panels highlight regions for which the features or feature sets performed significantly better than chance. Loudness was statistically significantly greater than would occur by chance, but other components independent of loudness, this example tensile strain, was also um, statistically significant. So that there are specific um, move components of the music which result in changes in ARI which are not sim a, a simple startle response. Um, at the most um, basic level. We conclude that music structural boundaries can produce significant changes in ARI, a surrogate of action potential duration. A range of reactions were observed, including contradictory ones, suggesting individual difference in responses. The true difference of ARI means across score boundaries were found to span almost 10 milliseconds, ranging from a decrease of 4.5 milliseconds to an increase of 4.5 milliseconds for windows of 80 ARIs. The range is even greater for smaller windows, going from minus 12 milliseconds to plus 8.5 for windows of 20 ARIs. This could play a contributory role to clinical understanding of arrhythmias and emotion responses. We now have gone on to look at changes in specific music features, such as loudness, tempo, and different kinds of harmonic tension, and data from all eight participants and 15 music performances from the three study days to demonstrate that ARI changes are not random, but can be linked to specific features in the music. We thank the funders and collaborators who have made this study possible, and look forward to sharing with you the growing body of results.